Welcome back to Animal Lover. My voice is giving in. Okay. <laughs> um, last time we got Charlie to go to the bag and um, get his money. So we have a place to stay. And um, Katie took him there so we could take a day off. I decided we spent this day with Edmund and we learned that he seems to be in love with someone he isn't supposed to be. At least he tried to fall out of love with someone and we don't know who and why but maybe we'll figure it out now. So yeah. Um, I've never died. Neither did Hamchop the hamster. Chocola the hamster did, though. And so did Carl the hamster. Wiggles. Hamter. Hamter! No! Come on! You were Hamter! <laughs> For those of you um, that didn't watch anime when they were young or didn't watch the kids' anime, Amateur is a um, uh, anime show about hamsters, friendship between hamsters and such things. It is really great. I, I tried watching it again a few years back, and I can't I can't understand why I watched it when I was young. No, I didn't really watch it. I watched maybe a few episodes because it was really really cute. It really is, but. <laughs> Still. <laughs> All right, Edmund Hamtaro. Hamtaro, Snuffles, Crack, and dozens upon dozens of wild hamsters, but not me. So when I say trying to stop loving someone is the hardest thing I've ever done, understand that I still don't think I've ever died, but it's still really hard. Why are you in love with Adara? Edmund doesn't say anything, he just stares for a second. There is my hand. Take it or leave it. Okay, so he either is still in love with someone that he was in love with when he was still a human, living in his time, or he was in love with Adara and broke her heart some way? Um, which all started this curse thing or he was nice to another lady she saw that um, was in love with him and was really jealous which which lead to this whole curse cycle <clears throat> um, why she would react in that way when some Random dude is nice to her. I don't know. Well, well, we'll we'll see. We'll figure it out. Since I guess we'll we'll date Edmund. <laughs> um, but uh, for what it's worth, I'm enjoying feeding the ducks. I used to feed the ducks in swarms in our country yard, court courtyard. Shush. So shush. Shush. Shush, is good. Oh, sorry. <clears throat> mm -hmm. Sorry. Sorry, so something a bit important. Just tiny little bit. Uh, people would stroll through the courtyard, speaking amongst themselves, but I was never too far from their conversations topics. Guards would sometimes placate me with the small talk, but I feel very solitary here. Being honest, I think I like this a little better. Glad to hear it. I hope you're not too lonely right now. I'm not. Thanks, Kaja. No problem. Any keys? No, not yet. Wait, there are a couple further down the lake. They don't look Incredibly agitated, so I think I'll leave them alone. Sounds like a good plan. I, if you need more money for bread, let me know. 
on you short and cash I am but Pratt's cheap and if there if everything works out then I'm about to be getting some help that's certainly true I'm going to go check on the others all right then I'm always happy when you come talk to me thank you Kaja you know for your company yeah no problem I like talking to you too Edmund Edmund smiles and at me as I walk away ah Frankie you're the next one come on Frankie just kind of wandered off without talking to anyone I have to look around for a second to find him <clears throat> he's not as immediately visible as Carl running amok on the playground or Miguel sitting large on the park park bench. When I find him, he is laying out in the middle of the grass, staring at the sky. Or it looks like he is. His eyes are closed. I decided to walk over and sit down next to him. Hey, Frankie. Frankie gets up for a moment to see me. Hey, Kaja. How are you hanging in there? Uh, I'm doing alright. Much better now than uh, that we have an actual lead and possibly a semi-permanent place to stay for you guys hey that's great why don't you lay down oh sure sounds nice i lay down with frankie and stare into the sky for a moment my head is behind the shade of, tr of a tree but frankie is direct frankie is directly in the sunlight as i look up the sun peeks out from behind the leaves of the tree I would normally bother me it would normally bother me to have the sun occasionally blinding me. Oh, I can't read today, I'm sorry. But right now it washes over me like it didn't even have matter. I can hear things that I wasn't hearing before. It's nice. This is nice. Oh, I am uh, I'm aware. I should do this more often. I've spent uh, lifetimes in the sun. <laughs> Stupid smelly gets lifetimes but you know lifetimes wow smelly huh everything smells very different when you're a cat uh, did you know that cats can't taste sweet things actually i didn't veterinary intern oh it sucks i really i'm really glad to have had that soda pop when i was turned back i'm glad Charlie never got his after transformation drink. That's not a thing. But it's a thing. But it's a thing. I specifically said it wasn't a thing. To bet it's a thing. It's not. It is. It's not. Then Frankie stops talking. His silence is not comfortable. In fact, it's inspired. I wish I could just stop talking occasionally. This is really nice. You got really weird after I said it there is nine. I did. Why? Because I eventually have to fess up. Two? Oh, right. I'm not proud of that. Really, not at all. I imagine... Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> I... I don't think you get it. It's not like I came to the, um, what, uh, 21st century? The 21st century and said, I guess I was kind of bon uh, kind of a bonehead back then. I regretted it immediately. How could you regret it if you were a cat and didn't remember Dara? She didn't curse me right away. It wasn't like she just accepted me in the middle of the workplace. She took her sweet time. I'm sorry to hear it. Me too. Did you feel guilty as a cat? What uh, do you mean? Could you f still feel some kind of guilt as a cat? Did you ever think back to what happened? Did you ever try to deal with how you felt about her? I... No. I didn't remember her. I couldn't if I wanted to. But I guess I did have a nagging sensation in the back of my mind that something was wrong. You can't deal with something uh, that's wrong if you don't know what it is. Especially when you're a cat. But uh, I got to spend a lot of time sunbathing. <laughs> which I guess isn't the worst thing. But there's nothing good about feeling stupid. And I did. And I miss my mom. 
but here I am, sunbathing, feeling the breeze. But I get to think about however, uh, whatever I want. And I want to thank you for that, uh, Kaja. So, thank you. <laughs> yeah, no problem. Lay down for a minute. Um, I'm okay. You're close. Thanks for keeping me company. I'll tell you when, I don't know, when something happens. You've got it. Ah. Okay, so eat, un eat lunch. Eat lunch, I know. It's a new thing, lunch. Eat lunch with Miguel, call and check on Charlie, or cause trouble on the playground with Kyle. I do not want to cause trouble. Double. I can't speak today. <clears throat> Eat lunch with Miguel. Miguel has sat down at the bench. He's holding a plastic box from Danny's diner. I decide to go sit down with him. I've completely forgotten what he ordered by this point. <laughs> the bench he's sitting at is in the shades of a large oak tree. Hey, Miguel. Hey, Kaja. How are you hanging in there? I'm just glad to be outside, to be honest. I've been in the car at strange houses in the zoo then since I changed. Oh, um, I, and I'm not really glad that I'm somewhere quiet. I'm just really glad that I'm somewhere quiet and restful. The outside feels more like home than I've felt in some time. I'm sorry. For what? If I'd known, I'm sure we could have taken a break somewhere. Oh, no, no, no. I understand. You've been under a lot of stress. Yeah, I have. I'd be moving as quickly as I could to make sure everyone is situated too. At least I think I would. I guess I don't know, do I? Either way... Oh, either way? Yeah, I guess either way. I'm here now. Oh, yeah. Miguel gets quiet again. A priest passes by and presents Miguel's hair. Things are so strange. You know what, Miguel? What? The other guys I could see which getting angry at, but I'm having trouble imagining her getting angry at you. I tossed it around my head a lot. Why on earth would she want to curse you? I already told you. I opened the door for her. She got really angry and she started to float in the air. You will remember the name of the Grand Witch Adara. I'm still a little disturbed by it. I think I am too. Yeah. You know, most of your family is still probably alive and missing you very much. Ah, uh, I did it again, sorry. I didn't have that much family, to be honest. My mom left when I was young. No brothers or sisters, just my dad. I love my dad, and I'm going to find him. But let's wait until this all blows over. When I'm... when I know I'm not going to turn back into a dog, I'll find him. <clears throat> I think that's a great... a uh, good idea. Me too. We need you, Kaja. I don't think anyone else is going to tell, say it quite like that, but we do. I do. I understand, Miguel. I'm glad. Um, we are going to get through this. We are going to find a place to stay, find the switch and find out how to reverse the spell. Alright. I... I believe you. But why are you doing this? Because I have to. Is that all? Right now? I don't know, maybe? I'm working on the fact that I don't know. Um, but that if I don't, you guys became lost souls for hundreds of years and you guys haven't done anything to piss me off. And that's why you're taking on all this stress? I'm not sure I could do it. I don't think I have the strength, the strength you guys have. I'm not trying to back on myself, but I doubt that I would go crazy doing what you're doing. It seems like a nightmare, and I'm not the type. <sighs> uh, you've 
already been through a great deal. I don't do think you have the strength. Oh, come on. I think you could do it easy, Miguel. I'm not worried about your abilities. You could do all this without a problem, I'm sure. I... yeah, maybe. I, if I had to. But again, seems like a total nightmare. And it kind of is. Taking care of you guys is really important. And if you sh the, uh, and I'm sure you guys will make it up to me eventually. I'd really like to. Things are perfectly quiet for a minute as Miguel cuts through his food. I'm left with nothing to do but watch. Which is fine. Just as re just a relaxed, perfect moment. It's perfectly fine. Ah... Uh, I think I'm going to go check on the others. Alrighty then. Uh, call and check on Charlie. All of the other guys seem to be perfectly content with where they are. Yet yeah, Charlie is still slaving away inside of the bank. I guess I could call Katie to check on how Charlie's doing. That could be a good idea. I pull out my phone and stare off into the horizon above the park's canopy. I begin dialing Katie's number. Ringing. Still ringing. Hello? Hey Katie. Oh, hey Kasha. I'm just checking in with how things are going over there. Pretty awful actually. Really? Yeah, things aren't working very well. We actually had to drive around a bit. But uh, we seem to be making that way. Wait, you're not at the bank? Yeah, it turns out it doesn't matter how much you look at like the hold of a bank account. They can't just let you in. Imagine that. I guess that makes sense. Um, where are you coming from? I'm not actually up to explaining it right now, plus I'm driving. Mind if I hand the phone off to Charlie? Wait, you're currently driving? Yes, give the phone to Charlie. Pushy. Alright, here you go. Then the sound of fumbling into the microphone. Then Charlie. You've unfortunately been cheated out of exp uh, an explanation, Carter. I don't feel like explaining it either. Oh, I guess that's fine. Cool. Because this is turning into kind of a bullshit little trip. Especially since every time we have to drive somewhere new, Katie keeps telling me I owe her one more order of chicken nuggets. I owe her like three now. At least she's getting her money's worth. One of those stops was the gas station and I owe her chicken nuggets for that. At least she's getting her money's worth. Whatever. This is bullshit and I hate it. Are you at least having fun with Katie? About three orders of chicken nuggets worth of fun. As he says that, I hear Katie giggling in the background. Charlie's not giggling. Well, I was calling to say that I really appreciate this, Charlie. And why, this is as much for me as anyone else. Regardless, thank you for your help. No problem, I guess it turns out that I really need you for this. Might as well make myself useful. But I had to get my phone back anyway, so I haven't really done anything that great yet. My money, not phone. I would have done this at some point eventually anyway. Um, <clears throat> um, what you're doing is great. Charlie, what you're doing is great. I don't think you should be so hard on yourself. Hard on myself how? I literally need my money back. I was going to not go to the bank and find a place to stay without you guys. Well, either way, get these guys out of my car and I will kiss your feet, Charlie. Sure, yeah, you got it. Hey, uh, Charlie? What's up? You... you're handling this cursed by witch thing better than anyone else here. I want to know why. Is it because you were only trapped for a year? Are you kidding? I'm flicking, flipping my shit right now. Consider this. We get too close to the witch. She finds you. She curses you. We are all trapped. A thousand years passes before we can do anything. I'm losing my fucking mind. Oh, that's scary. Please, don't lose your mind like I'm losing my mind right now. Please. 
but if I were to ask myself why I'm handling it better, I don't know, I guess I got over lucky. At the very least, I could write a journal about what happened and begin the fight against this lady, even if I'm not around to fight it. <coughs> Alright, we'll see where this leads us in the next <laughs> in the next part. Uh, yeah, you can see I record this all in one day, in all one sitting. Uh, I hope you enjoyed it yourself. I'm sorry. Um, yeah. See you next time. Bye.